Hey guys, today I'm going to quickly show you how to rip any Blu-ray, CD, or DVD media you may have lying around. And I do not take any responsibility for the legal reasons of this video, nor do I encourage any selling of the media that you may rip, as that is illegal. So first what you're going to want to do is go download this program called Make MKV. The link for this and all the other softwares will be in the description. So you're going to want to download this. I already have it installed, so I won't download it now. You're also going to want to install Handbrake, this software right here. Again, the link will be in the description. And then you also may want to download iTunes for um, another feature that I'll show you a bit later. So first, what you're going to want to do is launch at Make MKV and then put in your media you want to rip. We're going to do this using a Blu-ray disc as an example, as I feel that's what most people will be working with. So once the disc is in there and it's had time to read it, it'll pop up like this. And what you're going to want to first do is click on the click on the icon, and the software will start um, reading the disc and checking it for for all the data it has on it. This process may take a few minutes, may take a few seconds. It just depends on the speed of your reader as well as how much data is on the disc. And once it's finished reading it, it'll give you this list of all the items that are on the disc. A lot of it's just junk and stuff that they put on there to try to prevent you from doing this exact process. So pretty much anything below this point that's just a few few megabytes, all, all this stuff, stuff that's even a few gigabytes. Um, pretty much from this point down, it's all just junk. You can see these top two files are quite way bigger than the rest. They're 22 and 23 gigabytes. We'll get to those in a minute. But as for all of these that are just um, little tiny files, you just want to uncheck those right away as they're just, they're just junk files there to try to trick you and prevent you from getting the actual data off the disk. So just make sure those are all deselected as you don't want any of that when you download it. There. So then for these top two, you'll usually get, you might sometimes only get one big file and that makes this a bit easier, but sometimes you'll get two. In that case, what you first want to do is check to see how many chapters are in each one. Each one contains 24 chapters. And um, at this point, you'll want to open each file up and see what they each contain. If they each look like they contain the same amount of content, you're just going to, in most cases, want to go with the bigger file. So we'll uncheck the 22 gigabyte one. And then at this point, you'll select what you want. Um, we don't want Chinese subtitles, or you may want them, but we don't. And we don't want French or Spanish or any of these. In this case, all we're going to want is the the video, which is this top file right here, the main file, and the two English files right here. And once you... we don't want that either. And once you have the ones selected that you want, you'll select your destination. I'm just going to put this on the desktop to make it easy for the video. And then you'll click this button, make MKV, and at this point it'll start copying the data off the disk and making a file. And once that's done, you'll be left with a file that looks like this, sitting wherever you decide to put it. It'll say that the task has been completed. And then at this point, we are done with Make MKV for that step. If you plan on redoing this procedure with other items, you'll need it again to do what I just showed you. But uh, then you'll have a file that just looks like this. And at this point, you might be tempted to just use this file and say, hey, I got, I got the movie. But um, the problem with this file is it's in M, is it's in uh, MKV format, which is not readable by a lot of devices. And the problem I have with it a lot is for some reason it won't play the English soundtrack. So even though it's there, so at this point is where you want to get out the Handbrake software. When you download it, it'll look something like this. And what you're going to want to do first is go to sources. And then you're going to want to go and navigate to where that file is. Uh, for us, it's on the desktop. So we'll use that. And once you've selected it, it'll drop it in the, um, it'll drop it in the software. And then working our way down, it'll tell you all the information about it. Um, this is the title. It's chapters 1 to 24. 
and then the duration of it is one hour and 38 minutes so then you're just going to want to select the location where you want it and you can name it whatever you want um, in this case we'll just name it the name of the movie and you're going to want to make sure it's set to mp4 here and then you'll hit save and then these are some these are the settings I use which seem to yield the best results you can change them and I'll tell you what they all do for cropping you're going to want to make sure you set it to custom this is something you're going to you want you're going to have to do basically unless you want it to be a weird resolution because if it's automatic sometimes it'll give you weird cropping settings so you set it to custom and then make sure all of these values are set to zero and then under filters you want them all to be set to off and then the video tab this is where stuff may get a bit more complicated uh, you, you're going to usually want to use H.264 you can use H.265 but I just prefer to use H.264 it's compatible with more devices and for frame rate you're going to want same as source and I like to keep it at a constant frame rate you can change it to variable if you want and then for optimizing video adjusting this will basically it'll um, it'll affect the size of the video and it'll affect the speed in which it takes to encode you can if you want to set it to to very slow it'll it'll have the it'll have a really small file size but it'll take a long time to encode if you set it to ultra fast it won't take very long to encode but the file size will be enormous so I usually set it at about medium seems to be about a good place and then you want to set this to film auto auto and then quality is um, it it is it's the quality of the video if you the lower you set this slider the higher the quality will be but the bigger the file will be and the longer it'll take you, for HD videos you usually don't want to go anywhere below 20 but I like to go to 18 just to make sure I have that extra little buffer but honestly 20 should be should be good enough and you're never gonna want to go to zero that's just that's just ridiculous so set that to about 18 usually about between 22 and 18 is the sweet spot and then once that's done you can also go to the audio tab and select the different tracks as you can see we left those two English tracks selected when we were making the MKV so those are both here we'll just leave it as the the normal one and then I personally like to have my audio bitrate set to 320 which adds a little bit of file size not much at all it adds a little bit of file size and it's to a certain point it'll make your audio sound better honestly as long as you're at about 160 that should be fine and then you can also add in subtitles if you want and then you're going to want to make sure this is set to mp4 and then if you plan on uploading it to the web which if it's ripped content I recommend you don't you would want to set it uh, web optimized and then at this point this is going to take the longest but it is worth it especially if you want the video to look good and you're just going to click start on that it'll start it'll prepare to encode and then down here you'll be able to see your statistics based on your computer's specs and what options you set on the video tab that'll base the uh, amount of time it'll take you can see for me it's going to take about an hour so um, I won't make you sit through all that I'll, I'll fast forward through all of this and I'll talk to you when it's done oh and also you can go up here and if you have multiple videos processing at once you can uh, view all of those right here so I'll let that process and I'll get back to you when that's done. Okay, and once that's done, you'll have another file that looks pretty much identical to the first one, except for this one has been reformatted as an MP4 file. So with this one, I'll bring up the properties on this one. So this is our original file, and this is our um, converted file. You can see it's a bit smaller, which you could make it even more smaller if you change these settings a bit. If you set this to take, if you set this to be slower, and turn this higher, which would in turn make the quality lower, that would make the file size smaller. But as of right now, it is smaller than the original, which is still a benefit. And under the details tab, full HD and at this point with this file it's it's pretty much useless so you can hold on to it if you want but uh, like I said it's pretty much useless so you can get rid of it also um, so with this one now you have 
Now you have the full movie. They all use this. And then you have a, you have a full version of the movie right here. And at this point, we can put Handbrake away because we, we no longer need it. But now with this this uh, copy of the movie, you can make copies of it. You can take it with you wherever you want. It can be played on pretty much any device um, without a connection to the internet, obviously, which is really handy. And then one other thing I just wanted to quickly show you is, as of right now, this just has this boring one snippet of the movie for, for an icon. You can see it's a little bit of the 20, 20th Century Fox logo. But if you don't want that, and I don't want it because it's really boring, you can download iTunes and you can switch it fairly easily. So to do that, I'm just going to get rid of this because we don't want to get it confused anymore. So you download iTunes and then you don't have to be signed in or anything. And then you just take your movie and you're going to drag it and hover over the library, the library area in the corner here and just let it go. And then it'll make a new tab called Home Videos. And then you can see your movie right here. You can see this is the same, the same little picture that's on this one. And then at this point, what you're going to want to do is go to is go to this website which I'll also have linked in the description and on this website you can find movie art and covers and everything for uh, for um, changing the image and so you'll just search up your movie title and it'll give you some of the options and then you can choose which one you want I usually try to stick with the original one that's actually on the cover of the movie and then you're going to want to find, and at the top here you'll see the other sizes, and you're going to want to go with the biggest size, because that'll look the best. And then you just simply drag and drop it onto your desktop. And then it'll be right there. And then you can get rid of that. And then now what you want to do is right click on the movie, go to Get Info, and then this will pop up. Then you want to click on Artwork, and then you want to add artwork and then you click the the cover art that you want to add and then you click OK and you'll see it'll change there and it'll change right here so this is the original cover art so I'll get rid of that but now this is what your movie looks like so if you click on it it'll launch the movie again looks a, looks a lot better and a lot more professional than just having a little the little old icon that looks like this so now with this, you can do whatever you want with it, just nothing illegal, hopefully. <laughs> and there you go, that's how you can rip any content. And this works with DVDs, Blu-ray, CD, any disc content, really. And then just one more little review through Handbrake. The, um, the lower this number is, the, uh, the higher the quality, but the longer it'll take. Uh, up to a certain point for, for HD, for... Uh, HD videos usually you wouldn't want to go any lower than 18. Even 18 is a bit excessive, so you probably usually about 20 or 22 is the is a good level for it. And then for this, it just depends on how long you want it to take versus how big you want the file size to be. If you turn it down to very slow, the file size will be really small, but it'll take a long time. And if you turn it up to ultra fast, the file size will be really big, but it won't take nearly as long. And yeah, that's how to convert your Blu-ray or DVD discs to an MP4 file, otherwise known as ripping. And thanks for watching.